nice. are you among the party that would say like Nobra if Nobra was able to come back a couple chapters earlier then it would have been a little bit better or would you have rather her be dead no I think I think Gage kind of wrote himself into a corner with this because I didn't like it when she was dead as well I think the way he wrote that ambiguous status was um I, I didn't really like it I didn't like that little Yuji Megumi conversation where how they're just kind of skirted around it and not telling us whether she's alive or dead i will say the reason why um because i can definitely agree with you where points directly back to what you said earlier where the way that gege kind of writes he kind of leaves certain things open it's it gives him the choice right like you kind of said where it's like he could have brought nobura back at the end or he couldn't have but he left it he left the kind of decision and status of her of being alive or dead in a place where it's kind of he could make that split second decision whatever chapter he wanted to whether it was 10 chapters yeah. ago this chapter right now whatever it was the one thing i will say is that regardless of like the kind of weird things that um of, of her waking up very convenient at the very end everything like that nobara is a character whose inclusion i feel like we were waiting for right i feel like towards the end at this point uh, ultimately why i like it is because i think at the end we needed some kind of contribution from nobara at the end i feel like the overall point um that gig Gege was trying to make at the end was that pretty much everyone contributed in some way shape or form whether it was their death that contributed you could say someone like Yuki sure Yuki died and everyone was mad that she died and she was wasted but at the end of the day book, you know uh, was massively instrumental yeah Mm -hmm. everyone kind of had a, played a part in their own way and even like a character like Higuruma we watched them die Nobara uh, something that I saw that I thought was a valid criticism would you have rather um in this instance, Nobara's return been some, been through some form of like curse tool, like they did with Nanami, um, and had her contribute in that way. She's definitely dead, but at least she was there in spirit through the curse tool. That would definitely land a lot harder for me. For me, the problem is this doesn't feel deserved for me for Nobara. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel warranted. Like with a curse tool, that you don't have to think about whether this is deserved or not for the character right because it's it's the character's dead and their tool is being used after death i would like that that would be cool um i would have much less of an issue with it if, if that's how it went down i don't think i would have any issue with it i think you can you can make justifications in terms of oh it's gojo's ideology it's it's the next generation all of that stuff but this is a character that's been presumed dead for half of the series you can still that that message was still coming across just based on how this entire fight happened. It kind of feels redundant. If anything, last chapter had that with Megumi fighting back. I got the same effect from Megumi's little fighting back, the little shadow thing he did last chapter. In terms of themes, at least, um, it's the same effect as Nobara coming back. If if you wanna if you wanna talk about Gojo and his ideology versus Sukun is in this final fight. So yeah, I. <laughs> For me, it just feels like it's an undeserved moment for this character. It should have been set up differently. It should have been more of a character moment as well, because it doesn't really feel like a character moment for Nobara. It just feels like, I hate to use this term because everything in the story is technically one, but it's it feels plot device -y, right? Like everything's a plot device, but when something feels like a plot device, that's the problem. That's that's what it feels like to me. I can understand that. Definitely Nobara coming back at the very end when there's only four chapters left now and there's literally nothing else for her to do. She she was basically put into time stasis for her to come out at the perfect moment and use her ability um, and save the day at that exact moment and then nothing else. Right. So she was basically she started out as this main trio character that was going to be someone who was supposed to develop alongside Megami, Yuji, and then they, she got taken out of the story and then nothing was left until they needed her curse technique again. So I could definitely understand that. I've said this multiple times on stream a lot where I feel like once once a mangaka gets sort of towards the end of their story, it's almost like they, they railroad, right? Where they start going, okay, I'm going to have to make some kind of cuts here or I'm going to have to stop expanding on certain things here or there's certain questions that are going to be left open that I have to kind of curb here. I feel like overall, like there's certain corners that we cut. That's another thing I wanted to mention with the Nobara thing, right? Yuji's reaction. That's a really great moment. Like Yuji, like almost tearing up. No, finally finding out Nobara's alive. That big grin on his face. That is a fantastic moment. But it's like, it's very, very overshadowed for me by the big reveal. 
That's why having these two things as two separate scenes would hit a bit more for me. If we knew Nobara was alive, we would be able to actually appreciate Yuji finally finding out she's alive. You know what I mean? But mm. since we're getting both at the exact same time, it kind of, it's overshadowed by the big shot. That's yeah. one thing I feel with it as well, yeah. I guess my next question would be, do you think Megami's coming back after this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've been, from day one, I've always said, I think Megami is, if if anyone is living at the end of the story, Megami is, Megami is living till the end. I Maybe think, I'm wrong. But nah, yeah. I think now that Nobu is back, I think Megami's got a really good chance of um of coming back. I'll be honest with you, 266, I thought, I thought I was pretty validated in saying that Megami was gone. But I've, I've always been team Megami, Megami lives until the end, but Yuji could be the one to die. But now I think all three of them are living. Um, and Gojo's just the, the only one out there, like from that one interview statement, he said all them years back. I always thought Megami was cooked from 212 on. I'm like, I, I said it. I said Megami's never coming back. I thought so. But if he does come <laughs> back, I'll be, I, I'm okay with it. It doesn't, I don't think he needed to die, but I don't know. Sometimes I just like, I just like when, uh, when characters just, uh, get a Game of Thrones ending, like, fuck you, Megami. That's what you get for, you know, bringing all of us into a death game. Right now though, with Nobara coming back. I don't know. Maybe I was mischaracterizing Gege a bit. Maybe, maybe they are <laughs> a bit nicer than I thought. I was <laughs> expecting something meaner. No, you're so right. Because it now that now that Nobu is back, it shows that this isn't the evil author that's kept his audience in the dark for 100, 200 chapters because Nobara never mattered in the first place. This is now the author that thought it was a good idea to keep his character, you know, out of the story for 100 something chapters just so he could have a big reveal at the end. And now, and, and like you said, it's almost like, oh, you're you're not who I thought you were, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the illusion has been broken, essentially. Yeah, JG, yeah. Yeah, I think the final finger bit with Nobara and everything like that, I think that was legitimately and, and, and it... So like it makes sense, right? Like I don't think you could you could argue that it doesn't make sense. Um I definitely think that the biggest criticism is like it's just sh kind of just shoehorned in at the very end. I guess is the biggest thing that people have a problem with, right? Um yeah. but I, I would never say that it doesn't make sense. Like I I even tweeted it um when the last chapter 266 came out and I was like I know Nobra is supposed to be dead, but this is like the perfect setup for the final finger soul resonance theory that everyone's been saying since Shinjuku showdown even started with uh so mm -hmm. uh, it didn't it, i don't think it came out of nowhere um i don't know I, I i like i said i think there's a couple problems that i've had with like Shinjuku showdown and i just think like this is probably one of my least one of the least bit problems i have other than that though i did really like the chapter other yeah. than nobara like every everything else in the chapter i really liked besides just the nobara reappearance being very sloppy like exactly. when i when i seen that page <laughs> Of her looking straight at the camera, basically, or like it's a page, but looking straight at the reader. Let's see some smiles. I was like, bro, he he knew what he was doing during this. <laughs> yeah, that actually is. Uh, I the 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 comeback of the uh, the OPP thing. I thought was was. I think the way that oh, Gage did it was good. Um, yeah, I think on the back end, there's just some trivial things overall i don't really care about it overall like i said this like i said from the beginning this is like one of my least this is one of my least eye rolly moments of of the final arc for sure i feel like i've got bigger ones when it comes down to it um i mean besides that another moment of this chapter that i really liked was we got like the short moment of sakuna just trying his best to deny that he's getting his ass beat right now and he's about to lose i thought that was that was very yeah. validating for me at the very least like seeing him try to find every single way that he could justify like actually no i am i'm the, i am the one winning yuji you're you know you're weak you haven't used reverse curse technique you've reached your limit i'm the one that's still fighting i'm the and then yuji just shuts his ass up like that was very validating to me with with divergent fist of all things i love whenever whenever divergent fist comes back into the fray um i it's a it's a fan favorite chapter for me in my honest opinion I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> nah, I like that a lot, man. He was like, "You're you're the one on the ropes." Like, <laughs> yeah, <"Hi>, bro. <laughs> he needs the, to the, get humbled, the... man. That's and it's it's That's... it's it's beautiful that Yuji kind of gives him that whole. Yuji gives him the little bro treatment, like literally at the very end. Like I ain't like he, when Sakuna gets pissed. Like, are you looking down on me? He's like, "Yeah, I I am." You found out? That's, oh shit! <laughs> That's what's scaring me though. That's what's kind of scaring me though, because it's like. 
is he about to get the Mahito treatment next chapter, bro? Is, are we about to have like an I'm you 2.0 with Sukuna like crawling away, bro? I can't have him going out like that. <laughs> like, I, that that's too pathetic. Yeah, I, I feel like he can't have a really pathetic conclusion. I don't think that would make sense for his character, honestly. Um, but him like clutching onto the to the win or clutching onto being on top at the end there makes you think that it's possible. It's possible we do get a, like a really pathetic conclusion for Sukuna next chapter for me that would feel very redundant though mm -hmm. like it, it, we've already had that give us something more give us something fresh uh for Sukuna I think over I think overall Sukuna at the end of the day finally accepting the def I, I feel like Sukuna accepting that he's lost after he's lost is probably what makes the most sense to me if, from my understanding of his character Probably he's yeah. gonna put throw up the biggest fit, and then when it's over, he's gonna be like, "Damn, well, shit, I guess I did lose." That would be that would be a good way to tackle it, I think. Yeah. How do you think overall? Like, I, I guess this is the the best way to to ask. Like, what do you think is gonna happen? Is Sakuna gonna die? Is Sakuna gonna go back inside of Yuji? Well, how do you think Sakuna's story is going to actually end? Ah, huh, that's it's. That's it's tough, to right? Answer. It's tough. He's yeah. such a you know an enig almost like an enigmatic being, like. It's hard yeah. to imagine him just dying to this black flash and then it's lights out. If we're not getting no part two or anything, he's dying. And even if we are getting a part two, I could see him dying anyway. Like activating the merger with his death or some shit if we do get a part two. Yeah, for, I think I think dying. I don't see him really going back into Yuji. Yeah, I, I think that also makes sense where like, like uh, because we know binding vows or whatever, you know, giving the rest of your life in order to uh, perform something, uh, you know, maybe that's enough to override and sakuna in his last breath activates the merger i also see that being a pretty valid way for sakuna to go out as well with the with the the middle finger on his way out i think makes also makes absolute sense as well um yeah. because then we get sakuna because then I, th I think that's the most balanced way for sakuna to go out right where no one technically no one technically killed him or did the final blow he kind of takes himself out instead of choosing to lose um to like this all-powerful merger thing